This is my wife's truck, it's a 2012 Ford F-150, and um, the AC has, has not been cooling. I know it's low, so I've already evacuated the, the R34A that was in there. Now, I know it was leaking from the high service port. So you only want to do this when um, everything's out of there. Now, let me tell you, I went to AutoZone and got a, um, what do you call it, service port repair kit. Um, it had you know, the replacement parts for it. This is a 134A system, but Ford, for some reason, and, and the newer models, I guess, 2010 and up, on the high side, it uses the fitting for a, or the Schrader valve for a R1234, 1234 YF. Um, that's a new refrigerant that they're using in these newer vehicles. But if you use a regular um, Schrader valve removal tool, which would be that end right there. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of small. It'll easily take out the low side, but if the high side is, is gone bad, like this one, and you can see, come here. You can see, see this green? This is the oil once it's mixed in with the refrigerant. It has been leaking out of here. So that's, that's where my leak has been. So I went to um, O'Reilly and bought the, the Motocraft YF3290 um, Schrader valve that goes in here. But then I had to go to another auto parts store, Advance, and get this tool because they didn't have it at the local O'Reilly's. This is a service port AC uh, tool for vehicles. This side is for your regular Schrader valve, just a small side, but this side is a bigger one for these valves. So I'm here looking at it and they look exactly identical. So you know what? I might be able to return that one and just use this one. So here you go. If you'll come over here, you'll be able to see. Oh, come on, you don't have to be shy, don't bite. You see right down here how much bigger uh, that port is. And so what I'm going to do, basically what I'm going to do down there, is going to go over that Schrader valve and I'll be able to turn it out of there. Now, of course, only do this once the system's been evacuated. And did it grab? If it did, that thing was pretty loose in there. Hopefully it'll come on out without me having to get a pair of pliers and needle nose and grab it out and that's exactly what I'm gonna have to do okay so I'm gonna try to get it in here should pull right up maybe I didn't get it loose enough right, let me try it again kind of hard to see oh I didn't loosen it there it is now just felt it come loose kind of tight oh look there's a little bit oh I know what this is I did pull a vacuum on it just to see if it was going to hold and it was really slow so there was still some vacuum left in there and it came out I didn't even need the pliers and that's dirty and look that gasket is completely wore off I mean, look at it it's almost not there compared oops compared to that I mean you can see the gasket right there so I'm going to take this out. It's going in the garbage. I'm going to take a peek, make sure I don't see nothing. And drop that in there. Put over it and then just screw it down till it stops. Doesn't have to be super tight, you know, just nice and snug. Let the gasket do gasket things. Just keep spinning. Now it's getting tight and finger tight. And we're ready to go ahead and pull a vacuum on this again. All right, I'll go ahead and take off. I've already replaced this one, but I'll show you. Here's the small side, low side. The low side is really where you're gonna do all your work at. Some mosquitoes trying to get me. Just twist. Come on. And then this one I will have to use a needle nose to go ahead and pull out. There it is.
okay now that's a brand new one I just took it out so I can show you and then once you put the new one in there just get it mounted over there and just twist it till it's nice and snug and right there okay so now we're a, we're gonna pull a vacuum on this and you have to pull a vacuum and it does two things it gets all the air out of there and it also gets as much of the moisture out of there especially in here in Florida it gets very humid so you want to make sure that you know you get it all out so you can do two things you can buy your um, your AC hoses and gauge or you can rent them um, and when you rent them at AutoZone and uh, I'll forget how much it is you give them you basically buy it but then you can return it you know within a few days and you get all your money back um, and then you're gonna need an AC um, compressor a vacuum pump like this now AutoZone also rents these and normally you know they do a good job but I got tired of constantly going and renting and returning it. I went online, I found this and the gauge set. This was $99. And then this gauge set, I believe was like 34 bucks. And it works perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and get this started. Now, you normally want to set this somewhere nice and level. I know that's a fuse box, but really it is it's sturdy and it's not gonna to shape too much. Make sure you're between a minimum and max on the fluid level. They sell compressed oil. This is fine. And then make sure you take off the top. Okay, it's got a vent out. Then what I do, go to one of these two ports and hook up the yellow line to the compressor or the vacuum pump, excuse me. All right, snug, not tight, snug. Then go to your low side and go to your low side port, which is normally the, it's gonna, always gonna be the, the larger um, pipe. It's not always here. Other vehicles have it in horrible places. This one's really convenient. You um, pull up on the collar, push down, and just make sure that it's in a closed position. Same, now, since I've replaced this valve, you don't always have to hook up the high pressure side if all you're going to do is add freon i mean ac 134a to be correct don't even mess with the high side but since i already knew that valve was leaking and replace it i'm going to go ahead and and hook up to it same thing might want to brace it underneath and it's just going to be a pain There it goes. And then make sure that's closed. Pack up your compressor. Now, if you come on this side, let's look at this, these gauges. See the low side is right at zero. We want it below zero. It actually is gonna go below that negative 30 um, VAC. And then on this side, there's a high pressure side sitting at zero. You're gonna see both of these go on down because it's gonna create a vacuum. So turn your compressor on. It's on. Turn your low side up. Open it up. Now it's gonna pull all the air. Now here a little, see? That was loose. Now it's closed. All right. Gonna pull all the air out of here and go to the low side at the valve and open it up. You should hear the compressor change sound. And this, now look over at the compressor and see the white stuff coming out the top. Pulling the moisture right out. We come on this side. At the sight glass, you're gonna see it looks all cloudy. Maybe some bubbles down the top. It's pulling all of the vac. It's pulling the vacuum. It's getting all the air and the humidity right out of the system. Again, same with the high pressure side. Open that up, and then open up the valve here. All right. Now, if you look at your gauges, 
you're going to see that they're both below zero. They're actually at the lowest it can get on this gauge, which is negative 30. Um, you can barely even see that. But anyways, negative 30. Now, what we're going to do later on, we're going to add free, um, AC, I mean 134A. We're going to close this valve, probably even just unhook it. And we're just going to go off the low side. So we're going to see, we're going to pull a vacuum on this for about 15 to 30 minutes. Make sure we get all the humidity out of there. And then we're going to just let it sit here and see if this number goes up any. If this, this gauge goes up, or even this one goes up, after we turn it off and close the valve, that means there's a leak. There shouldn't be a leak. I'm just saying. So we're going to pull for about 15 minutes, pull all the humidity out of it, and um, basically we're going to wait to stop, stop smoking. And you can see this, um, this vapor right here. You know it, gets, it has everything out when that clicks. Okay? So, see you in about 15 minutes. Okay. So, just to show you again about the bubbles. You, know, you may always have a little bit of bubble in there, but let me show you. Come on closer. Here's the sight glass on this um, vacuum pump. And if you look right up there at the very top. Ooh, my fingernail's dirty. See all those little bubbles up there? Kind of dizzy. See all those little bubbles right there? That's the air that is pulling out. So we wait, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And actually, let me just go ahead and tell you. You want to leave this thing running overnight, go right ahead. You're not going to hurt nothing. All you're going to do is just pull every bit of that moisture out of there, which is a good thing. You don't want any moisture in there that shouldn't be. So it's been, I meant to keep it on here for 15 minutes. It's about two hours later. I got tied up doing stuff. Looking here and there's barely any bubbles at all. So I guess that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, there's no vapors coming out. So before I shut this off, first thing I'm going to do is close the valve at the Schrader valve. Close this one, low side. Close the high side. And up here, close this one. And close that one. And then turn off, turn this off. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna, I, I know it's not gonna leak, but if you look up there, the low side is at negative 30. And then the high side is actually below negative 30 on this gauge. So it's got a vacuum. Normally I can wait, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, and just, just see that I'm not. I'm just gonna just let this go. Okay. Because I know it's not going to leak. So what I'm going to do now is that's closed. That's closed. I'm going to go ahead and take the low side off. Take the high side off. Nothing's going to leak out of the way. Put these up here just to get, keep them out of the way. And really, we're not going to need this again. So let me go ahead and get this whole setup out of here. The rest of this, even if you took this to somebody to do at a shop, all you're gonna need is one of these hoses you can buy at the auto parts store. Okay, it's just a low pressure, you know, refilling hose. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil since I know some oil has leaked out of this over time. I'm not gonna put very much in here. This is an old can, um, had it for a while, kind of rusty, but there's nothing in the actual hole. So let's just screw this onto here. Give it a good shake and and look at this you don't have to have it cranked up to do this since there's a vacuum as soon as i put this in and push down this level it's going to actually suck the oil out pretty quickly i'm not going to add a whole lot so i'm not going to sit here and put the whole can in and this is sucking it in i mean this the engine's not even on I'm going to just add some oil. I can even feel it here going through. Okay, that's all I'm going to add. I mean, not much came out. So now, I'm going to show you a little trick. Every vehicle should have this. This vehicle takes 134A. How do I know that? Well, 
come up here on this vehicle and has it listed AC 134A and this is a 5.0 engine so all engines except 6.2 liter so it would be this one charge level 24 ounces so here I have just two cans of R134A 12 ounces each so it should take two of these cans that way I know I have exactly what this vehicle should have and the charge will be right so again put it on here and then you're here it leaves since it's got a good vacuum on it and when I hear it not you know fill up anymore I'm gonna crank up the engine and I'll, the pump will actually kick on and I'll start sucking it out okay it stopped so we know there's some in there right now so I'm gonna grab my cap so I don't lose them we're gonna crank up the engine okay so the engines running we go ahead and compress this and the compressor hasn't kicked on yet but it will there it is it just kicked on so if you come over here i'll show you what i'm looking at So you see, oh, I don't know you can, right down there. There's a compressor going, compressor and it's spinning. So now I know it's taking charge. And I already know it's going to take two cans. So I'm not going to stop charging this until I have two cans of the refrigerator in there. May have to stop every now and then because the can, the gas, is going to be leaving. It's going to uh, expand and it's going to get really cold. The pan will start to freeze over and so will your line. You want to charge it straight up, not upside down. It needs to go in as a gas, not a liquid. When it builds enough pressure in here or it starts to, um, the fans will kick on. All right, like I said, as you're adding this, you'll see the can start to get frosty and okay, I'm shaking it okay oh the fan just kicked on so it's starting to build up enough pressure that it's it's, it's sensing the trigger in there you can take your finger touch the low side it's going to start feeling cold especially right here as you're putting it in then the high side will start feeling warm I, you might want to get a rag in case you're a little sensitive with your fingertips. Here's a new one, the second one. Nice snug fit and put it in. And I'll be honest with you, every now and then, as it gets to the bottom, I will turn it upside down and get every last bit out. Okay, so I got both cans in. Um, it should be 24 ounces. That's what the capacity is. AC is blowing nice and cool. Uh, it's it's about mid 70s outside right now. And so right now in here, it is, I don't have the right thermometer. It's all confined at the moment to meet the thermometer, but it is 52 and dropping. Actually they are 50, 52, 53. The pressure just kicked back on. And so here it is, it's dropping again. So what should happen, you know, now it's only like 75 degrees outside right now, but tomorrow it'll be up in the 90s. I should see a good, you know, consistent 50 something, maybe down in the low 40s or mid 40s when I'm up speed and traveling down the road. So you can charge your own AC, even yourself, just using some basic tools and a little bit of know-how. Hellman Mechanic, see you at the mailbox.